So, and then I uh, want to touch on the omega-3 fatty acids. Don't we need fish for omega-3s? And we hear this all the time. We need it to reduce our risk of heart disease. We need ome long-chain omega-3s for our brains and our eyes and so on. Answer is actually no. We can actually get these nutrients from plants. We can get alpha-linolenic acid from land plants, like chia flax and hemp seeds and walnuts. We can get and a little bit from greens, and we can get the long chain omega-3, EPA, and DHA from sea plants called microalgae. We actually get a little bit from macroalgae. And you know the difference between micro and macro? The micro are these tiny, tiny little plants. The macro are the big seaweeds. Now, in the big sea, we get, we get uh, EPA we don't get um, uh, DHA. So just to, to know that. And then now, uh, Rita, you were just telling me about another source, ahi flower that has DHA from a flower that's grown up in Canada. So we're going to have to investigate that one a little more. That sounds really interesting. Ahi flower, yeah. A-H-I. <clears throat> Very interesting. So, and, and fish do not, this is critical. Fish do not make EPA and DHA. Just like, you know, animals don't make the essential fatty acids. Fish don't make EPA and DHA. They're made by microalgae. So EPA and DHA are made by microalgae. The zooplankton eat the microalgae. The herbivorous fish eat the zooplankton. The small carnivorous fish eat them, and then the large carnivorous fish. And that's how they get their EPA and DHA. So we can go directly to the source, cut out the fish, and just grow the algae. And so it's widely available now as a supplement for uh, people who don't want to eat fish. So do plant eaters actually get enough? So compared to non-vegetarians, EPA and DHA in the blood, tissue, and breast milk are about 30% lower in lacto-ovo vegetarians and about 40 to 70% lower in vegans. So there's definitely lower levels in vegans. So why the low omega-3s? Well, because diets are often insufficient, contain insufficient alpha-linolenic acid, which can be converted to EPA and DHA, and diets may not be well designed to maximize that conversion. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. How, do, how can people who don't eat fish optimize their omega-3 fatty acid status? Number one, you need to be aware of the factors that can depress conversion. And those are non-diet factors like genetics and gender. Men are less efficient than women. People who smoke, um, uh, age, as you get older, you, you, young babies and older people uh, don't convert as well. Chronic diseases like diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and hypertension can reduce the conversion of the plant omega-3s to the long chain, more biologically active omega-3s like what you would get from fish. So what about the diet factors? Well, high intakes of omega-6 fatty acids can impair conversion by about 40 to 50%. And omega-6 fatty acids, well, I'll mention those in a minute. Inadequate uh, nutrition. You need to get enough of the cofactors for the desaturase enzymes to be able to convert, so you need a nutritious diet. Some of the things are you need enough protein, you need enough zinc, magnesium, niacin, pyridoxine, and vitamin C. You, need in, you, you want to minimize trans fatty acids and alcohol because they can impair conversion. And very high fat diets. There was a study comparing diets that were 40% fat versus those that were 20% fat. And the very high fat diets actually limited conversion of ALA to EPA and DHA. The next thing we need to do is make sure we get enough of the plant omega-3. So what do we need? Well, for people that don't eat fish and don't eat EPA and DHA directly, they need about two to four grams of, of, uh, of ALA a day. And if you look at how much is in foods, you get about 2.6 grams an ounce of walnuts. You get about the same in a a heaping tablespoon of ground flax seeds. You get about a 1.7 in a tablespoon of chia seeds. 
you get about 0.9 in a tablespoon of hemp seeds, and you get less than 0.1 in a cup of leafy greens. So in, in essence, you need to eat like a horse or a cow to get enough from leafy greens. You'd be eating about 20 to 40 cups a day, right? And so that's a lot of greens, but greens can still contribute. If you eat six cups of greens a day, it's giving you a portion of the omega-3s omega that you would need. So, and then we want to reduce omega-6 if we're using excessive amounts. And so we want to avoid omega-6 rich oils in cooking and in processed foods like safflower, sunflower, grapeseed, corn oils, uh, soy, cotton seed, sesame oils. It doesn't mean you can never use any, like I might use a couple of drops of sesame seed oil in a peanut sauce to give a flavor. It's a flavoring. But you don't want to use these things in any great quantity. And you, oh, the omega-6 whole foods, don't worry about. So sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds and all of that, you can generally enjoy those, in, at least in moderation. And then do consider a direct source of long-chain omega-3 fatty acids. Who really needs it? Well, those with increased needs, like pregnant and breastfeeding women, tend to have lower levels of DHA than, than omnivorous women, so it might not be a bad idea to boost your level a little bit during pregnancy so that your baby's, you know, going to get enough for brain growth. And, and you know, this is a little controversial because women of childbearing age are the most efficient converters. So they convert about, one, one study showed a, a, a conversion of about 36% to long chain omega-3s from ALA, which is just phenomenal. So they converted uh, uh, to uh, EPA, DH, uh, DPA and DHA about 36%. So really quite, quite uh, a lot. Um, and then people who don't convert eff eff efficiently, and so that's people with diabetes, metabolic syndrome, or hypertension, and populations with traditionally high fish intakes. So someone from Japan or someone from an island where they eat a lot of fish, their enzymes responsible for conversion may not be produced like the average person would produce those enzymes. So then in those people, they may need a direct source and may be wise to take a micro supplement, like Dr. Furman's supplement, for example. So some people um, do better with direct sources. What do you need? Well, you, you know, we usually say two or 300 milligrams a day. Some of the supplements now contain up to 1,000 uh, milligrams, which may be suitable for some people. I've met a few people who have had their levels tested, and they said they couldn't get them up with under six to 800 uh, milligrams a day. So for some people, they, they may need that. There are advantages to the plant-based option because they're clean, so they're not contaminated with mercury. They're, they're sustainable because we're not raping the ocean to get them. We're growing them, and they're cruelty-free. We're not killing anything. So some pretty significant advantages. There are problems with fish. So fish tend to be among the, the, the greatest sources of heavy metal, mercury, lead, cadmium. They're among the greatest sources of environmental contaminants, especially dioxins. Fish would be the number one source, but even PCBs, DDT, malachite green, which is an antimicrobial, uh, antibiotics, antiseptics. So, and there are ecological concerns. We're rapidly depleting our fish stocks. There was one report that said by 2048, our fish stocks would be gone. Shocking. And there are ethical concerns. And one of the things that I'll never forget is this, this film that showed the wonders of the ocean. And it was just incredibly beautiful. And at the end of the show, they showed this shrimp trawler come along with a net that was about a mile long. And what it does is it, because they're bottom feeders, shrimps are bottom feeders, is it, it drags the net on the bottom of the ocean for quite a long time, lifts up everything to the boat, and in that net, you can imagine what they catch. Dolphins, turtles, you name it. What they do is they, they basically pick out the, the, the shrimp, which is about 20% of the weight that is there, of animals that are there. The other 80% are dropped dead to the bottom of the ocean. It's disgusting for the little bit of shrimp. 
And, and we need to think about that as human beings. It doesn't make sense to me for us to be doing that. 